Walleye season is finally here, up in the upper Midwest and throughout most of North America, you can fish for walleyes, the seasons are open, and the way this bite has shaped up, it's been a really good spring opener for us this year. With warmer water temperatures, the fish are snapping, and in this video, we're gonna teach you all you need to know to catch springtime walleyes on one of the most popular presentations for this time of year, and that is the jig. So we're gonna be hopping in the boat with Brad Hawthorne on Mille Lacs Lake, which was really hot this opener, and we're gonna catch some walleyes, and we're gonna teach you how to catch walleyes on jigs this time of year. Hey guys, Brad Hawthorne, so I'm gonna show you how easy it is to catch fish on Mille Lacs right now with just a long shank jig and a shiner on the first cast. As always with jig fishing, you want to let that jig get to the bottom. Don't start working your jig. Give it a nice, if you're in 10 foot of water, give it a nice eight, six, eight second count. And then just slowly work that jig back. You know, we found the last couple of days, it's not that snap jig and it's that slow, just let the jig act as natural as possible. Running out of time, Nick. I don't think it's gonna be the first cast. Maybe not. First <laughs> cast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, called it first cast walleye. And can I get that net, Michael? Thank you, sir. Oh, come here, guy. And that is how you do it on the lax. Pretty easy presentation. That is gonna be your long shank fireball with a shiner on there. And simply working that jig right back to the boat. All right, now that we got that first cast out of the way, Brad is gonna share a few more thoughts on why he loves throwing jigs for walleyes this time of year. So early season, just about anywhere in the state of Minnesota, jig, jig and minnow is gonna be king. and. You're gonna see that until the water temps are right up into the mid 60s, which for this year in particular, which means it's a little bit of a warmer spring, which means we're gonna get about two or three weeks out of it, uh, maybe more way up north. But it's a staple. I mean, jig and minnow in the state of Minnesota, it's why the jig in Minnesota is the number one seller because guys that know how to work a jig effectively just catch the living heck out of walleyes early season. If you can pitch a long shank jig in Minnesota with a shiner or a chub or a rainbow minnow, you're ultimately gonna catch more fish just because you're keeping that jig and that that presentation in the strike zone for the longest period of time. Like if you look, we're casting here, we're casting out about, I don't know, 180 to 100 feet and it's just slowly working that jig right back to the boat and we're getting bit like crazy. So that is, that's kind of it. And it's just, it's the most simple approach when that water temp is below 65 degrees. Now, once you get above 65 degrees, you're gonna see the blades start to work, things like that. But for the most part, in Minnesota, for the next two to three weeks, jig and minnow is gonna be king. Now, kind of my, my method for jig and minnow is anything under 10 feet, I'm using eighth. Anything over 10 feet, I'm using quarter. And anything over 16 feet, 16, 17, 18, I'm using three eighths. So if you use that kind of that scale there to choose jig size, it should be pretty easy. Now my initial cast, I let it hit bottom, and then I just slowly work the jig back, maybe two or three times on that cast hitting bottom, but not letting it sit there. Now one of the biggest keys to success to catching walleyes early in spring like this is making sure that you're finding them as quickly as possible. And the best way to do that is to utilize your electronics. Now next up here, Brad is gonna talk about how he likes to utilize his side imaging to find walleyes quickly. And he's also gonna show you sort of how he identifies walleyes in side imaging, even when he's fishing them around rocks, when it can be kind of difficult to pick them out. So usually early season, walleyes are gonna to go towards the warmest water. And that usually is the north end of the lake, you know, northeast, north, northwest end. And that's typically gonna be sand, sand rock, gravel sand, things like that. And how I pick fish out on side imaging is quite simply I'm looking for shadows. And like right now we're fishing basically 
rock and gravel to sand and sand mixed in with that so it's pretty uh, it's pretty easy to pick the fish out as long as they're really not right in on the rocks but uh, as soon as I pass a bunch of fish I'm gonna have Nick grab a screenshot and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about as far as seeing fish and what to look for when you're in those sand and sand to rock transitions like actually right here is if you look there's rock right here and rock right here and there's one two three four fish right there those are actually little shadows of walleye that are just outside of it and if you look at all the erratic stuff right here all these erratic shadows in there not not all of them but all these erratic shadows in there are walleyes and then you take these here there's nothing ahead of this to cause a shadow so that's those are definitely fish always look ahead to figure out why that shadow is there if there's nothing ahead of this to cause a shadow that means that those are shadows caused by fish so a lot of times you're not looking for the actual mark you're really looking more for that sha that shadow that shadow can be absolutely key when you're looking in rocky areas like i said before one of the cardinal rules to side imaging is if there's nothing in front of that shadow to cast a shadow it's 99 percent of the time it's going to be a fish now whether that fish is faced you know towards you or parallel with you you know you're obviously going to get a bigger shadow from that but with rocks showing up hot you know hot white kind of like they are here that shadow is always a dead giveaway for fish and it is a little hard to pick out on rocks but once you get proficient with it you know if you're not sure spin your boat around cast and when you catch those fish that'll just cement that in your mind to let those marks are fish turn around throw at them and once you build that confidence up side imaging gets a lot easier when you're fishing rock to sand transitions and gravel and just plain old bouldery rock all right now that you've completed the first step in catching walleyes which is finding them you can start crushing them like this Oh, another one on the long shank fireball. I'll tell you what, early season fishing is so much fun. You get out there, you get to use your electronics, you get to throw jigs, and it's, it's truthfully one of my favorite times of year to fish because you have so many different things going on. You have active walleyes that are bending rods and the pure thunk of that jig, when you cast it out there and a walleye hits it and you get that thunk, it's just absolutely amazing. This feels like either a little bit, a little bit bigger fish. But yeah, early season by far, pitching jigs is one of my favorite things to do, and it's a Minnesota staple. If you are a Minnesotan and you don't know how to pitch jigs, hopefully a couple of pointers in this video will get you pitching jigs like a pro. So. You guys have all seen those videos where they uh, they kind of just leave or they don't show how well these fish eat that jig. Look at that. I mean, he's There's no uh, cut in here, folks. That right there is exactly how these walleyes eat a long shank and a jig in minnow. So there you go. Let's get it back there and catch another one. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys a couple of couple of things about long shanks. Now this is the Northland long shank fireball. And the reason why I like this jig, for one, it's got a really stout hook on it, okay? So this hook here, I can take a file to it if I'm running through the rocks, and I can just put that point right back on it. I've also got a hook keeper here, so if I change over to plastics midday when the sun rises a little bit, I can bend that up and that's gonna keep that plastic on there. And then for you river guys and Lake of the Woods guys, it's also got that stinger keeper on there so if you want to run, want to run a stinger with live bait you can do that as well but one of my favorite jigs for simply pitching shiners early season and again don't be afraid to put a file on that if you're running through rocks this, this hook is still really sharp but if you're running through rocks and you bend over the point run a file on it and you can do that about a hundred times before you'll wear out that jig right there now let's dig in a little bit deeper to how brad determines which colors he likes to use when he's fishing jigs for walleyes I sat there and that was one of the best meals I've ever had. We're like, you guys are out with oysters? There we go, Nick. So, have you guys noticed, you know, it's still mid-morning, but the sun keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And I like changing colors. I'm always pushing the threshold with colors when you're jig fishing. 
because if you get locked into that, oh, I'm gonna use silver, oh, I'm gonna use gold, all, you know what I mean? You, you tend, you're gonna catch less fish. I just switched out, this is UV pink, UV pink right there. And you'd think, Brad, why are you using a bright, zappy color like UV pink when the sun's getting higher? And the answer to that is simple. In the morning, everything's waking up. You want those natural hues, those natural flashes. As the day goes on, your fish are gonna get more sluggish and you're trying to trigger the bite, bite versus coax the bite. So that's why I start using zappier and zappier colors as the morning goes on. And it's, I don't know, it's probably getting close to nine o'clock today. And anyway, so let that kind of be a lesson. Don't get stuck into that wormhole of natural colors for walleyes, this and that. As you've seen right there, last fish was on gold. Even though I'm catching a lot of fish on gold and silver, I keep pushing the envelope on color to try and catch more and more fish. So if your bite dies a little, don't fire up the boat and move. Change colors first, give it a few more casts, and see what happens. Now one thing that I know a lot of you are probably interested in is how Brad is hooking up his shiners on, the, on those long shank jigs. So that's what Brad is gonna demonstrate right now. So there's a couple of different ways to hook shiners on long shank jigs. This is, this is the one I prefer. You come in the mouth, just simply loop through, and you're gonna kill the minnow. Don't worry about killing the minnow on this. Push them all the way up, bend the minnow forward, and then slide that hook in and then use two fingers and pop that hook through. You see how that hook is barely sticking out the top there? Just enough to catch that walleye's lip and that's the perfect presentation to keep that minnow like just looking natural and whatever. So that's basically it. And you know you can you can also just go straight through the skull. I don't like to do this. This this presentation right here gets that just gliding really really straight, really really straight and really narrow through the water column. So that is kind of the deal with, with hook and minnows. You can just skull hook them if you want to do that. That will keep them on there a little bit longer. But when you're working the jig a little bit faster, you tend to get that swirly action and things like that. So that's kind of the preferred way to hook jig and minnow. Now, as you can tell, we are using some solid size shiner minnows to catch walleyes in this video. But you can also use plastics this time of year when you're chasing springtime walleyes. And next up, Brad is going to talk a little bit about when he likes to use plastics versus live bait. If you're just ripping and there's no ceiling to how fast you can work live bait and catch fish, that's when I'll go to a jerk minnow, um, something, you know, impulse jerk minnow is a great bait. And that's where you just kind of delete the live bait. So if you're consistently catching fish, hand over hand, fist over fist with minnows and you're doing it with a snap jig approach or working it extremely, extremely fast, that's when I go to plastics. Um, for instance, today I don't think is gonna be one of those days. We've tried it a little bit, but going back to that traditional long shank and shiner is definitely what's putting fish in the boat. Now, if I was snap jigging, you know, this type of action right here, and I was consistently getting bit, that's when I would throw plastics on, because then at that point in time, you're just triggering the fish. They're not looking at the minnow, they're not smelling anything. It's a pure something came by me and it's erratic and I'm gonna drill it. And so that's when you go to uh, plastics, or at least that's when I go to plastics, is when you don't need to have that subtle approach with the uh, jig and minnow. Now some of you are probably wondering how Brad is rigged up on the rod reel line side of things. And honestly, that can be a pretty important part of the equation as far as getting bit. So Brad is gonna run through that right now. So rod reel line setup. Okay, so I prefer when I'm pitching jigs. I like a longer rod and I might be odd in that, but I like a seven and a half foot fast action, actually ultra fast. And that is just so you can detect those bites when you have a little bit of slack line, that, that extra fast really helps bite detection. So I would say six, eight to seven and a half foot rod to get some length out of the cast. And then I'm using 10 pound braid as my main line, right? Underneath that I have just junk line spooled about halfway, you know, filled up so I don't waste a lot of that braid. But 10 pound braid, and then I'm going to eight pound fluorocarbon with a uni knot on that setup. And here's one little tip for when you guys start jig fishing. Right here is where my uni knot is. And if you look, right here is my casting length to the end of the rod. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna have your uni knot when you're casting 
in your spool. So people say, well, how big of a leader length do you use? Well, if you're using a 6'8", your leader length's gonna be about two feet short. If you're using a seven and a half, your leader length's gonna be a little bit longer because you're not allowing that, that knot to get into the spool. And with that knots in the spool and you cast, it's gonna grab every single time and your minnow's gonna go flying. So that's a real important, like if you ask me to name the biggest mistake, guys that pitch jigs do, it's winding that uni knot into the spool and then casting minnows off all day. And you guys know, you know, 12 bucks a dozen right around there. It's a buck a piece every time you flick one off. So keep that uni knot out anywhere between your first eyelet and your reel. Somewhere in there is where you're gonna want that in there and then trim your line to set or to, to figure it. And then perfect casting for me is like, if you can just barely hook your jig on your first eyelet, that's kind of your leader length. And that gives me about, I'd say about eight, nine feet of leader length. So that is the setup right there. I like also a nice light rod. When you're pitching jigs, you want a light setup that you can chuck all day and not have a sore arm at the end of the day. So I did team this tuned up rod with a Stratic CI4. These aren't made anymore to my knowledge, but they still are a really, really good reel. I've got like 15 of them and uh, some of them are almost 10 years old and they still work great. So you don't have to have new stuff to come out there and do it. The main thing is the right line and a super fast action rod to get the job done. Now that we've walked through most of the essentials that you need to know to catch walleyes this time of year on jigs, we're gonna leave you with one last walleye catch. Like, there we go. Ooh, another one, another one on the long shank. And our approach today is really, really simple. You know, once we find a pot of fish, just kind of look, you know, keep looping back through them, change up colors a little bit. You know, it's really, it's really not rocket science when you're pitching jigs. If you're on fish and you got the right color and you got the right bait, you're gonna catch a ton of fish early season. And that's the cool part, you know, it, you don't need a lot of fancy tackle to come out here and pitch jigs in Minnesota in the early season time frame. You know, you need six, eight, six, eight to seven and a half foot rod. You need a couple of, uh, whoa, this one's lively. You need a couple of uh, long shank jigs, an eighth, quarter, and three eighths, and uh, just have that and a decent amount of you know color selection in those and just know where you're pitching them you know again nice little walleye there and again that is my presentation it doesn't get any more simple than that a silver gold jig maybe parakeet color whatever with a spot tail shiner on there with a chub working it slowly back to the boat maybe giving it a little erratic pop here and there and you're going to put a ton of fish in the boat so for you guys that have never jigged fish or jig jig guys that just get out there and do it all year long come on up throw some jigs around you're going to catch between 25 and 45 maybe even 50 fish a day throw in minnows so get up here catch some fish buy some long shanks and put some walleyes in the boat well i had an absolute ball out in the boat with brad and obviously as you can tell we caught quite a few fish and what you didn't see in this video is that we actually snuck out once it was a little bit past lunchtime we snuck up into the shallows and chased down some smallmouth bass as well so it was an absolute ball i want to thank brad for hopping on the video and hopefully you were able to learn something as you watched as you can tell this video got a little bit long but there was just too much good stuff to leave out so if you learned anything make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below and stay tuned because we have more awesome videos coming this year